What's up, everybody? I'm Dear Gamer. Welcome back to the channel today. Today, we're back with some more Dragon Dama 2, and I'm going to be giving you some tips that are gonna help you have a cleaner, better experience just going through the game. Some of the things you're taught in the game, but you might be just be taking in so much that kind of grazes over your head. Also, Capcom is known for making great games, but also not necessarily informing you of how some of the things and mechanics work. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys some of those things that made my experience better and hopefully to help yours out as well. If you're new, make sure you guys subscribe. My fan, without further ado, let's dive in. So first thing we're gonna start off with is gonna be the pawn system. The pawn system is probably the most important, unique piece in this game. So you wanna make sure you're proficient in terms of how you're utilizing your pawns. So before we even get into the rift of having to utilize pawns, one thing is weight is a thing in this game, as you would know, because you run, 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 you gotta stop, run, run, run. So when you find yourself in a situation like I am right here, as you can see, my Mr. Whiskers is um, kind of heavy. <laughs> so the more weight you have, the slower you run and the more stamina you utilize when you are running. So if you ever in a situation where you get a lot of stuff, I will just pop it, give the Mr. Whiskers. Anything that's optimized by weight, so you know what is the most important thing. I need all of those, everything else. I can just give it to him and keep my weight low that way I continue to pick up things but also at the same time I can make sure that I am not getting overburdened so in here you can choose whether you're when you want to combine your items if it goes to if you take inventory from your your stuff first or for your pawn so I think in this situation it doesn't really matter but I think for me I would rather keep it on player so it kind of minimizes my inventory and frees the space for me also, so you can decide where your combined items go. You want to keep it yourself or you want to automatically go to your storage. So you can, that's the one way you can get rid of some stuff. You can just combine, combine, combine a bunch of things you don't need and it'll go straight to your storage. So you can go back in here, flip it back to character and it'll go back to your overall inventory. So we talked about weight when it comes to pawns. If also too with pawns, these other characters that you're, you're, you're hanging out with, you cannot change their equipment. If you put some stuff on them, then it's gonna leave with them when they ultimately leave your party. So if I find a better staff and I wanna give it to Cindy, which is someone else's pawn, I can do that. But when I leave, Cindy's gonna leave with that staff as well. So instead of instead of getting giving your items away to your pawns, unless you wanna be generous, you can do that. I would recommend every five levels or so, swap out your pawns. Meaning we're gonna go to our pawn crystal here go in there identify what kind of what kind of pawn i'm looking for then swap them out so now let's go ahead and before we get any further let's go ahead and talk into like team composition so for me when i was playing a thief thief has a skill where you can light the enemy my weapons on fire and i took up one of my skill slots but instead of doing that i just have a mage with me who we'll cindy here and what cindy can do is has the ability to ice infinity and lightning infinity and what that does is it gives me a power boost to my actual weapons and now every single time i hit i can hit with lightning or i can hit with ice so this is a cool way there's some enemies in the game specifically the globs that don't die with physical damage they need elemental damage so this is a good thing to have in your party and i also speaking of composition i highly 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 recommend you have a mage in your party every single time. If you're not a mage, make sure you have a mage. Why? Because the affinity boost is cool. Also, the antidote is cool. And also, too, the mages can heal you. A lot of times, you might not have... Whenever you combine items, you can combine items and make a healing potion with it. I already made all the ones I can make at the moment. And you can make these. When you run out of them, you're out of healing items. So having a mage in your party is always beneficial because all you have to do is hit the three D pad to the left, help me, and boom, hits you with a healing spell or whatever you need, and boom, you're back in tip top shape. So I highly recommend if you want to do two DPS, one tank, two range. There was a time where I was using two archers in a mage. I was using a fighter in a mage, a, a tank in a mage, but. I always highly, highly recommend if you're not playing the mage, you keep a mage in your party. Now the moment at hand, when it comes to picking pawns, how do you actually go in by here picking your pawns? You go to the rift and a couple of things that a lot of options you have available to you. So one, you want to identify what am I looking for? And pawn will get more in detail and I'm kind of go into that. But you can do is just press R1 and you can kind of swap through wherever you're looking for. Say I was looking for a mage instead of me kind of going to every single one. 
I can go here and say, hey, well, what skills do you have? All right, you have that one. Any mage with any kind of affinity, I can look at and see. All right, all right. Well, maybe not. Well, this one right here, lightning affinity, level 23. So the level 23, right now I'm level 28. So maybe a little too low for me. I kind of like to keep my pawns maybe like a couple levels above me. So I have them for a while. Like right now, I'll probably get like a level. This dude's good level 30. 28, 28, kind of low. Ah, it's funny I had this guy earlier. And we're kind of, that's all we got kind of got going on right now. So I guess I'll pick either 29 I guess, or 30. Depending on what I'm looking for. <laughs> also too, you also have the option of going here and they'll tell you all the pawns in the rift. So you can kind of go here and look from a distance and see, all right, well, which one is cool? What's here? What am I looking for? And also too, if you go to specialization, it tells you some couple of things that you might not know. So I'm gonna defeat a Cyclops, feel Cyclops, tell you what kind of gear it has. And the cool thing about that is, about these skills are, it tells you like this one is going for, you receive the fairy stones, nine of them. You're gonna wanna take this one because you wanna get those rewards as well. It tells you, the cool thing about getting a new pump often is a lot of times they come in and say, hey, I during my quest with my master or somebody else in a different world, I saw this item, I fought this, I know how to fight this monster. So the cool thing about it is they continually evolve. The more you send them out and the more you get new pawns that are higher level, higher chance of them accomplishing more, which will help your play style as well. So if you guys didn't know, there are certain quests you can miss in the game and you can tell quests is missable when you go into your quest list, they're gonna have a little hourglass symbol. I have none right now. But it kind of gives you a little bit of pressure to make sure you're kind of staying on top of your quest and not just picking up everything because certain things matter. Some other things are fine. They don't, I don't want to say don't matter. They don't expire like a couple of these, but some of them are going to expire. So you want to make sure you're mindful of which quest you're prioritizing and how many quests you're picking up at a time. Also too, sometimes a quest is not activating because for whatever reason, you talk to everybody in the, in the area and your quest is just not triggering. Sometimes you have to pass the time i love that sometimes all you gotta do is pass the time so there's multiple ways to pass the time the cheapest and free way of passing your time is going to go to a pub you can tell the pub by going to a little beer glass symbol like that and cool thing about these you go to them they say hey what's up and you just pass time and then go from morning to night dying to morning that kind of scenario instead of spending your money and don't ever use your money with these dudes you needn't trouble yourself use those money with those dudes and rest unless you're loaded because it's kind of expensive especially starting earlier in the game and boom just like that it was nighttime now it's daytime so some quests need specific time frames in order to activate and this is a way a free easy way to move progressing move the time in your game when it comes to your vocation every vocation can be leveled up from level one to level 10 and that's the max vocation at that point all the points you're getting are not going anywhere so the game really incentivizes you to swap around your classes as you see i maxed out my thief now i'm working on my miss experience hand and though all the skills of my thief are left behind the actual battle skills the skills and things I can take from build to build are going to be my augments. So it tells you right here, the augments of every class, you can kind of go through and read through each one. So you can identify how much time do I need to invest in this class to get the augment I'm looking for, then which will allow me to take that skill and move on to the next class I'm going to be using and put that specific skill in my build. So if, if I, for example, I look at the thief, this one is good, augments my strength. So I'm going to have to level the thief all the way up to the max level to get this augment. Now, when I'm on my mystic spear hand, I can still have that equipped. So those are the things that you can take from class to class. While you can't take your other skills, you can take, you can't take your core skills, your weapon skills, you can take your augments from class to class. Also too, you might not have known, Mr. Whiskers has his own set of points as well. I've been stingy with him. I kept him as an archer. I got to switch him up. I haven't decided what I want to go to next. I think I might make him a fighter and just kind of take him down the line because as you know, he has 21,000 points for his discipline that I can use and level up some other skills as well. Next thing is also, you might think it takes forever to load, to level up a vocation, but it doesn't. Now that I'm further in the game, after I maxed out Thief, I literally only been playing with Mystic Spearhand for maybe an hour and I'm already got to rank four. 
So it's once you get one leveled up, I'm not sure if you just get more points. You do get more points if you fight more stronger, harder monsters later in the game, which makes it easier for you to rank up the other classes as well. So builds, um, you guys know I love doing builds in games. When it comes to builds in this game, I feel like it doesn't necessarily matter too much because I haven't fought to got to a point in the game where I got stuck where things were too difficult that I had to go really work on a specific build. More of the story is when you get to a new shop, you get to a new area, go to the down the list and see for your class is there a stronger weapon that you can buy and equip. If there is, buy it, equip it, and keep it moving. <laughs> so that's essentially what it looks like. If you also too, none of these weapons here have any elements or this one has debilitation this one gets what does poison yes 18 percent chance like putting poison on the enemy it starts to get a little crafty a little later on you get into the game so these are things you might want to consider when it comes to like how do you want to build your your weapon all weapons and armor can be upgraded and you can add effects to them later on down the path which i'll show in a second so enhancing you have your enhancing it tells you what materials you need to enhance your weapon and you can choose some the first level is always gonna be money the next level is going to be more materials and then later on you're going to be able to add elements or whatever attribute you want to your specific weapon to change your play style if you want to add more power or element or magic etc you can do that at a later time when it comes to getting money it's kind of tricky with money because you can't really monsters don't drop money well some people drop money when you find people in the wall they drop money so when she said people always fight them but also too more importantly is Whenever you see random quests in the wild of like help fight these monsters, maybe an escort, maybe not the escorts. Escorts kind of trash because it might take you way off the route you're trying to go. But if you see a quest where it's like, hey, fight the monsters, fight them. Because a lot of times you get like fifteen dollars, fifteen hundred dollars. Also, two quests is going to be your best way of getting money. You can combine some items in order to make stronger ones like this and sell them. Also, you can sell your old gear. But as I've seen that stuff it's not that pricey to sell so uh, if you look as you can see my inventory things don't sell for that great so i would spend my time just combining stuff and doing little quests along the way and that's how you would find things to sell to make more money some items like this you know, like the bigger monsters the ogres the big monsters they drop things that are more valuable to sell so you want to farm a couple of those that's where you can make some more money as well when it comes to traversal there's not really much i would say in terms of like tips here it's just try to explore as much as you can if you notice this little trail right here tells you this is the route you can walk you haven't explored it yet that's why this one's colored this one is not so if you ever like unsure if there's a path to say i want to go to the city how would i get there and kind of see okay i can go here 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 walk and i will eventually get there there's only been one time where i couldn't get to a spot which was when i was going to this town there was a road that was blocked off here and it was a uh, like a collapse of a mountain and I had to like go off the trail around here and jump up. So don't feel like you're only you're always going to have a clear path. Sometimes you don't and you have to be a little crafty, but you can go off site and move over and find the route. I saw this campsites. It's funny when I first saw a campsite, I thought I had to buy a campsite every single time I want to use it. Incorrect. The way it works is you can buy any campsite and you can use it as many times as you want. The problem is sometimes you get attacked. And if you get attacked by monsters, which is random, at that point your camp is destroyed and you can no longer use a camp, so you have to go buy another one. So don't be scared to use campsites. I've used a campsite like maybe 50 times. I've only got attacked two times so it's not too bad also too some of the camps are inexpensive they cost like a thousand bucks so don't necessarily need to buy the most expensive ones if you're gonna get attacked a cheap one will work just fine you can level up and heal your character last thing this is a no-brainer but in case you're wondering a lot of these a lot of these caves have really really good weapons inside of them so i would spend some time every weapon every dungeon you can go into just make sure you just clear it out go through all the areas make sure everything is nice and clean and fresh all the routes are taken out that way you can make sure you didn't miss any particular items that you might have found down there i'm not gonna go here but if you want to duplicate an item meaning that you have one in your inventory you want to make another one for example teleportation stones i want to make another one on duplicate something i have in my inventory don't use or sell your last one go to this city to checkpoint rest 
and you go over here this guy abraham scrap store he can duplicate an item for you i did one of the teleportation stones that cost eight thousand dollars and he sells it for ten thousand dollars it's expensive but in case you want to duplicate an item that's a good way of doing it and to get to that city you have to go here as a part of the story there's going to be a little what is it this take this thing over here in this main city and it'll shoot you out or drop you out right over here so that was a quick way to get to that location ladies and gentlemen thanks for watching i hope you guys enjoyed the video hope you found some value in some of the things that we shared not super groundbreaking things but a couple of things you might have missed that you might not have been thinking about i want to make sure you guys have all, all the information possible to have a much fun in the game my family stay smooth stay smooth till next time dear gamers signing out